Welcome back to Very Train Josh here. Sorry it's been so long since I've put out a video, but I've had a new baby and I've had a lot going on. But this year I promised myself and the channel that I'd do a lot better job at least covering some of the MLF events or some important events as far as the channel is concerned. So thanks for stopping by to watch and also give me a thumbs up, a like, a comment about anything that I say in here. It helps the channel and I really kind of want to know what y'all think about the way I fish or what I post. So without further ado, let's kind of jump into today's video. This video is about the first event at Table Rock this year at the Ozark Division BFL and I did really well. Typically, I don't do that well in the late winter, early spring at Table Rock, but uh, I've had some good boaters kind of show me the ropes a little bit along the ways of struggle, Mike Webb being one of them down there. And I got another really good boater draw for myself. I've only had one or two not good boaters. I guess that's kind of 20%. This is my 10th event that was this past weekend. So I get the draw, it's Andrew Eisterhold, and I get it on a Friday at 6.30. Even getting down to the lake this time was really rough. It was snowing so hard in Columbia. It almost doubled the time it took me to get there. And it's not what you would envision for like, hey, everything's going the way I need it to. This is you know a good sign for a good weekend on the water or a good day or a good tournament. It was just really rough. So, I get Andrew, I give him a call, and I quickly learn that he is somebody I met the day prior, completely by chance, at a small fishing shop here in Columbia, Missouri, Tombstone Tackle, the oldest tackle store in Columbia, Missouri. And he and I were just talking shop for about 30 seconds, just in passing. And lo and behold, fate would have it that we were paired the next day or two days later at the tournament. We agreed to meet at 6.15. Hey buddy, good morning, how are you? Pretty good, I'm so. Not too bad. Um, are you are you uh, in a slip somewhere? Or are you just kind of hanging out? Yes, so um, if you come down like the gas dock walkway, yeah. and then you get to like the buildings at the end, Uh huh. I'm like on the back side of the dock where there's like two slips on the right. We drew boat number four, my earliest draw of my tournament career, which is not very long, but still boat number four is pretty early and I am excited about it. He's riding or owns a 18 foot tracker and we are staying around mid lake anyway, you know, so we can bust maybe 50 miles an hour, 45 full tournament load, he says, and we're not going too far, but it is 26 degrees. We don't sit out on the water before takeoff too long. No reason to sit and freeze on the water. We get to our spot. And he tells me how we're going to fish the spot. And I had done some research before this tournament to figure out what lure I wanted to use. You can watch the weigh-in, or if you did watch the weigh-in, and typically this time of year, at least for Table Rock, it's A-Rigs, Jerkbaits, Demiki Rigs, right? Live scoping for most of the boaters and kind of just throwing around an A-Rig or blindly throwing a Jerkbait. And I knew that going into this, but I wanted to try something different. And so I did. After he tells me what we're going to be doing. Uh-huh. All these, all along that ledge is brush piles. Oh, really? That's where I caught that damn near five pound pile. Okay. So I'm gonna come into the bank here, and then I'm gonna swing, and we'll kind of stay on the front of it. Okay. I do like seeing those geese over there. And the bush, yeah,
How deep is the this uh, the ledge? Oh, not there. You can see it. Like we'll be able to see it. I take out the lure that I've been trying to think that I was going to use this time, and. My first real cast, which I only made like a fake cast, but my first real cast, I caught a fish. I'm on. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell with one of these. No, doesn't look like it. I don't even know what it is. I what? Is it small? No, it's huge. Oh, he's pulling really hard. Sweet. Oh, I pulled the out, my bad. It was like a three pound smallie, which is kind of what I'd planned for. And to be honest, it feels really great because my plans don't usually work out that easily, that great, that often. So Andrew helps me net the fish. About four or five casts later, another smallie, another keeper. Fish. Yeah. I don't uh, he's pulling a little bit, but I, I I can never tell with these. I always they feel always feel big. Please don't be a walleye. Uh, he's pulling pretty good. Come on, baby. That's a decent one. Thanks, dude. Might measure him just to. About 15 minutes later, another fish, another keeper. <clears throat> I was just bringing that back into recast and he's like, I will try that. <clears throat> it's a large mouth. Now, between my second and my third fish, I flung off my lure. I only brought three of these. Oh no! I should have retied. Oh. Yep. I got more of those though. <laughs> flung it off. I didn't retie after two fish, which was one sin. And the other was kind of something I didn't realize, so it was my fault, but the eyelets were getting frozen, the line was freezing, and the line wasn't moving through the eyelets really well. And I think that energy just kind of flung it off. So anyway, retied, caught that third fish. It was just a squeaker. It was 15 and a half inches long, long and thin. I don't even think it was, it was a, a heavy one pound fish is what I suspect, but Andrew at this point has netted all my fish. Andrew is not caught any fish himself. And he's awesome guy. Like as a co-angler, you kind of have to be fluid with how you interact with your co or your boater, because you don't know who you're getting. You don't have to talk. I mean, I find it makes it easier an easier day on the water, but some people just are your people and some people are just not. I've had some really awesome boaters. Brent Chapman was really awesome as a pro, not pretentious at all. Brock Reinkemeyer, not pretentious at all. He was just a good boater. Chris Larkin, great boater. I've had some really great boaters. Kevin Miller's another great boater. Who else have I had? Mike Webb, good boater. Just a bunch of people that know how to fish that make it an enjoyable day. We'll put it to you that way. So Andrew is one of those, but Andrew's like more of my people. Like he's just so nice and he did his research. He went the weekend before, got on a pattern, found some spots that he liked, went the day before, did the same thing. 
and we came into this place and he was telling us how to fit like he put me on fish and as a co-angler that's all you could really ask for which is so wonderful so three to zero not that it's a competition but i'm starting to feel like hopefully he doesn't get mad because i haven't felt him out that much i've only known him for like an hour and a half and then 30 seconds, two days prior. So not too long though, I started to fall off. I wasn't getting any fish for about, I'd say an hour. So it's about 8.15, 8.20. Andrew's caught some fish, he's caught some keepers, he's quickly caught up. We got three fish a piece in this area. And I have tried some other baits, things that are supposed to work. A-rigs, jerk baits, small finesse jigs, swim baits. I didn't break out any tubes, you know? I didn't go old school. Nothing was working. So I got my lure back on, couple cast, let it go a little deeper, fishing straight off the back of the boat. Fish. Uh, yep. <clears throat> He's way out there, so don't worry yet. Caught my fourth fish. I don't remember, I have to look at the B-roll, I'll show it to you, but I didn't remember while I'm recording this narrative. I believe it was another largemouth. It was a good fish. And so I'm four to a full bag before 9 a.m. Andrew also catches his fourth fish. And within two hours, we have eight keepers. Now let's back up here. As a co-angler, almost at any tournament, you really, for the most part, to cash a check, kind of really need to aim for six, seven pounds, okay? Is what I found. If you want to do well, I mean, maybe double that, okay? It doesn't take a really heavy bag for co-anglers to do well. So I'm already feeling good. I probably got 10 pounds. I feel pretty good. And I have lost two of my lures, all right? I only have one left, nine o'clock. Sometimes when you catch fish early, you know, you get two fish, a prime example for me, a super tournament two years ago at Lake of the Ozarks with Chris Larkin, day two. First hour I had eight pounds and I was feeling really good, but the rest of the day I didn't catch anything. And I get those days a lot. I think we all do, where it's just hard to string some fish together sometimes. And this day, I really didn't care about that. I think I started stressing because I just wanted a full bag. Even if I had just like another really small fish, I just wanted a full bag, five of five. I didn't care about the money, the check. It really doesn't matter to me. It's not life-changing money. It helps. It's fun. It's good. It's great. Thank you, MLF. But it's not something, I, I mean, I fish because I like to fish. So we move on to his second spot that he has. I'm trying to get my fifth fish. He actually gets his fifth fish at a second spot, probably about 45 minutes or so while we're there. I'm just remembering. And I'm not getting anything. I've tried different things. I got my A-rig hung up a couple different times. I'm not getting anything. We go to the third spot that he has. It's kind of at the mouth of the, of the White River. And he calls a fish out. I'm still not catching anything. And I lose my third lure. Okay. And my feelings are hurt. I don't know what I'm going to do now to kind of catch fish because traditionally I don't do good at this time of year, especially if my boater's live scoping. I have some ideas. I don't stop casting, but I actually put down my rod and I'm stressing here. It is like noon and I'm still stuck on four fish and I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have my lure. I can't follow my plan anymore. So we go back to the first spot and I'm throwing everything that I got. I finally pick up my A-Rig. I make a couple casts and Andrew maybe has caught some other fish. I can't remember. I feel like he's caught, he caught more than six fish, but I don't remember if he called out fish there or not. He was just catching beautiful spotted bass and they were little tanks, big tanks. But I started throwing the A-Rig and I tried different stuff and i remember maybe i should try to slow roll it there wasn't too too many rocks where i was getting hung up all the time slow rolling it on the bottom that's what i'm going to do on this cast that's what i did i changed the cadence up a little bit i pumped it with a reel and then i turned it again and i got that last fish to bite and it felt heavy Oh, fish, fish, fish. Please be a good one. It feels good. 
Feels really good. Oh, it's really, it feels pretty heavy. But, I don't know. Could have just side hooked him, but I... Oh, it's a good one. Frick, I just want to hug job, you. Buddy. Good job. Nice. That thing. That's a damn near five pounder. That's a hog. Did I get that on video? I did. <laughs> Dude, that's the one. That's the one. That is the one. That is the one. You got 15 now as a co. That's a five pounder. It felt really good. And I'd been stressing all day. I was excited about just getting that fifth fish. And I get it in. And I think it's a big fish. And Andrew does as well. And when I say big fish, I'm just saying a five plus. You know, four and a half is, you know, a good fish too. But I'm thinking it's a five plus. I look at it. I'm looking at it. And... I'm pretty stoked. I'm pretty sure that I can win this tournament on the co-angler side. I was so excited I had to hug Andrew. Actually, it was just a weird feeling. Yeah, he's my, I hope he didn't take offense to it. He seemed like a good sport. Maybe he was happy to get me out of the boat. I don't know at the end of the day, but we both have our five. I just want to chill for the rest of the day. Uh, it's miserably cold and windy. Everything is frozen up, even some of the hardware on the reels. It was just really difficult. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Andrew. Thanks, buddy. We both go back. Three o'clock is our way in time, or at least check in time. And we get back. We both have good bags. All day. Yep. My man. man. They are so fat. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a good fish. What's up, man? Five. I'm just happy to be here. Happy the sun's shining. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. On the co-angler side, oh, they're, they're mad. Five today. As soon as they sit still, I'll push this button and we'll make it official. 13 pounds, 10 ounces. That's first place for now. Thanks. He goes and weighs and he's in third place. And when I weigh, I'm in first place at the time with 13 pounds, 10 ounces. I wanted to weigh a big fish. I thought that fish would weigh big. And I hope to God that I didn't pick up the wrong fish out of that bag. Because when he told me it's not gonna do it, I was like, okay, but let me weigh it anyway. And it was only 312. And one ounce. I don't think I'm gonna weigh That's, that's gonna not going to do it, but you can put it in there if you want to see what it weighs. Yeah. Three pounds, 12 ounces. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I thought that that was, I don't know. I thought that that was light. I'll say that. I thought it was light. I digress. I'm really thankful. Second place hung in there. I realized that I got second place about the time that I came back after dropping my stuff off at the truck. And I didn't know if it would hold. It did hold. It's pretty sweet. So the lure I was using, I debated on talking about the lure I was using and some of you might've been able to figure it out, but a lot of you haven't seen it yet because it's brand new from Berkeley. A lot of people have been talking about the credge. The credge is the bait that has kind of been all over social media and getting the coverage. It is kind of new in design. I don't know of anything else like this. But that wasn't what I was using. And it's really hard to get these. But they also released another bait called the Berkeley Finisher. And it comes in five, seven, and nine sizes. Okay, seven's where my sweet spot is. 
These are also very hard to get. I actually just got all of this. I ordered it. I got it yesterday in the mail to replace them. You can't, it's really hard to find. And I think you'll be able to find them again in late March and April, but uh, I wanted to make sure I had mine. The finisher is in a category of its own. It's not a crankbait. It's not a jerk bait. It's not a swim bait. It's, it's its own thing. It does so many different things and you could work it so many different ways. I think we're still all as anglers trying to figure out how the best way to use these are, or, or, or just how different you can actually use the bait. It is so cool in the water and it caught every species of fish. And that's what I used for four of my fish. The A rig was the only one that I caught that last fish on and the fish loved it. I didn't even have the right colors. I don't think at the time I had purple slime, which kind of emulates the the table rock color that you can get in some jerk baits and maybe some soft plastics, but I didn't think it would do great after the sun started coming out. And then the other color was Nebu that I used in EEBU or NEBU. It's kind of a gold, flashy gold and black with a blue back. It was great and they did wonderful. So I finally got some colors that are what I would think are more traditional shad colors or bait fish type colors. I got that. So go and try and find them. You know, I have no business or I'm not at the level where I need to keep it a secret. You still need to get them. You still need to figure out how to use them. You still need to fish with them. So and if you do and you do better than me, then good on you. It raises everybody. So guys, thanks for watching. Second place, first time. And that was my 10th event. So if I can keep a top three every 10 events, I mean, I'll take it. It's somewhere to start, but I got a long way to go. So. Thanks for everybody watching. I appreciate it. If you have any comments, leave it down below. Would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, man. See you next time. Bye-bye.